Hi friends, welcome to another video. Um, today it's going to be just my hands and we are going to be going through a couple of my inserts for my traveler's notebook systems and specifically in the realm of memory keeping and media journaling. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. I apologize for my voice. I am sick and I might sound a little stuffy. Uh, so I apologize about that. There will be captions as usual. So if you don't really vibe with my voice today, that is totally fine, I get it. Go ahead and mute me and use the subtitles. So essentially what I wanted to do was show you how I did my memory keeping in 2023 in a traveler's notebook insert, how I am doing it in 2024, just um, I guess three ways essentially that I consider that I do memory keeping inside of a traveler's notebook system. I was going through my inserts and kind of organizing them the other day and realized I never gave a proper flip through of my 2023 um, insert memory keeping insert so I just kind of wanted to uh, show that to you guys and give an example give some inspiration uh, maybe something in here will spark an idea in you so just wanted to share that so if you are interested in that go ahead and keep on watching and yeah let's go ahead and, and get started so essentially there are three ways that I've used a traveler's notebook to memory keep. And one of them, you might be like, that's not really memory keeping, but to me it is, and I will explain why. So um, before we get into the more visually um, intense aspects of my memory keeping system or what most people would consider memory keeping, I wanted to discuss, and actually before I even get into that, side note that this is an insert that lives inside this TN, but the inserts in here are not really applicable to this video so I'm gonna put this to the side okay so the first way that I have memory keep I have done memory keeping in my traveler's notebook insert is common placing now many of you may be like well is common placing memory keeping and I say yes it is um, for those of you who know me very well you'll know that to me, the media that we consume, the things that we read, they are part of who we are in terms of memory keeping. And so when you write down quotes, when you write down um, found, found, uh, found content and you work through it and you um, annotate it and you keep it, that is, that is a form of memory keeping. This is information that I jotted down in January of 2024. Right. And that is a form of memory keeping because that is something that then became lodged in my psyche. So you may not think that that's a form of memory keeping, but to me it is. And so I'm including it in this video. And I just wanted to show you a quick way that I'm doing my common placing this year in a traveler's notebook system. So I essentially just put my uh, found content, my quote, whatever it is that I would like to commonplace about. And then I will use this side kind of like in the margin area. It is an invisible margin that I'm using. I'm not really writing down um, or filling in the line, but essentially I will use the margin area to write down my tagging system for it and for indexing purposes. And then I'll go ahead and um, write down my thoughts and kind of interact with the text. So that is one simple way of memory keeping that I keep in my traveler's notebook um, system. I use it for commonplacing. So that's one way. And this is just text. I go ahead and just highlight the specific areas that are maybe more that stand out to me a bit more and then interact with it on the margins. So that is a quick and simple way that I do memory keeping and a way that you can possibly do that or vice versa would be kind of like in a dear diary form or things like that. But all to say that even if you're not writing about what happened in your day, in a commonplace notebook, a commonplace notebook is still a form of memory keeping. It is just a different form of memory keeping. So those that's my two cents <laughs> on commonplacing. Next is my actual, like what you what most people would consider uh memory keeping, right? And that is writing down about the things that happened in your day, the things that you've watched, the things that you read, putting in pictures of that you've taken of the things that you have experienced. Um, and so in 2023, I had my media journal and my memory keeping system in two separate notebooks. I had my media journal in a Hobonichi Weeks, which I do have a flip through of. So um, you can go ahead and check that out. I'll leave it linked up above in the cards. And I used my memory keeping system inside of a undated weekly uh, TN insert. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this to the side. Um, and I wanted to kind of give a flip through of how I used this insert and give you an idea of how I was memory keeping last year. 
Um, so this is not finished and in truth, I will probably not be finishing it. Um, I started this. So one of the things I did, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like all over the place. This is like a really chatty version. <laughs> I used this in this Calendex area to write down the weather uh, where I live because I really am interested in uh, tracking the weather. And so I started this on week 40. So really the last quarter of the year. And this essentially can hold half a year worth of weeks. So what I decided to do is that I was going to do two forms. So two spreads per week, right? And the first spread was going to be a written, majorly written uh, spread. And the following week was going to be a picture heavy spread. And so that's what I did for most of the rest of this notebook. And so each week we'll get two spreads because it ended up being that that's how much I needed to be able to complete a quarter. So let's say you wanted to do this idea instead of having two, um, instead of ending up with two inserts for the year, you'd end up with four inserts for the year because there's, you know, four quarters. <laughs> so that is an option to you if you would like this idea. If I would have kept up with the system, I probably would have done the same thing because I really do enjoy the idea of having a more uh, text heavy and then a more image heavy spread. That's not how I'm doing it in my system this year. I am doing it differently, but this is a, I really enjoyed this system. I do have a journaling medley where I set this up. So I will also leave that in the cards if you're interested in seeing that. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like what I was doing. Um, just kind of decorating the spreads ahead of time and then going in and um, entering that. If you can, you can see here that this week I was listening to Black Friday by Tom Odell, I think is how you pronounce it. I was listening to that nonstop. And so I went ahead and just used that as like the hero of the spread and put my pictures around it. Um, just some lyrics from the song. And so that's kind of like, it was one of my favorite spreads actually. I really liked how this text area came out. I really love using bold text for quotes and for lyrics within my memory keeping systems. Because one of the things that I think a lot of people get hung up on is, oh, I don't really want, I don't really want to read back on certain things. It's not really that important to me to read back that I did boring stuff in a day. And I'm not necessarily going back and reading that, but there's other things that are surrounding it that I enjoy looking at. And I mean, end of day, you memory keep the way that you want to memory keep, but that's kind of the way that I approach it. Um, and so you see here, again, this is like week 42, just using the stickers that I had bought um, and actually hold up because I need to cover people's faces. Okay, faces have been covered. So um, this is another way that I approached this spread. There weren't a lot of images for this week. So I just went ahead and printed the main ones. There was four. I just have a picture of my grandpa here. So I covered that up and just wrote stuff about that. So even on my picture heavy spreads, I didn't shy away from writing in stuff, right? Like it's not like they weren't gonna have any text. This is just a way that I was approaching to have more fun with the idea of the spreads and kind of experiment with different styles of memory keeping because maybe you aren't the type of person that likes a bunch of text and you prefer images and stickers and ephemera. That's okay too, right? Like whatever your preference is. I, I don't really like the spread. I kind of went crazy with the stickers that I got from Sticky Club. Um, but, you know, it, not all spreads are winners. <laughs> so that's that one. This is, um, it was fall in this time. What week was this? This was the week of October, I think. Or a week in October, rather. Yeah, week 43. This was a before Halloween, the week before Halloween. Um, so yeah, we went to Acadia, my family and I. They came to visit and we went to Acadia and then I love this spread so much. Um, so again, just lots of little dot stickers. Here's another, um, I think that if I remember correctly on TikTok, the song, a song from Wicked, um, was playing on my feet a lot. And so it was stuck in my head. So I just went ahead. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? I do believe I have been changed for the better. So I went ahead and added that. We had the first snow of the season that week. That was fun. 
Um, and <laughs> as you can see, I actually, for end, for all of the picture spreads moving forward, I didn't end up printing out the pictures. I might later on come in because the pictures are on my phone, right? So I can just print them out and put them in. But none of the picture spreads moving forward have been completed. So <laughs> don't be ashamed of the blank spread. Um, I do have a short where I set this one up. So if you're interested in doing that. And I think actually that I have footage of this that I have included for my November journaling medley. So that might be coming out at some point. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm doing a series that is called a journaling medley series, which is just snippets of journaling that I've recorded that didn't end up in another video during that month. I don't want to just, you know, bury that, that footage. I think that it would still be useful for you know, inspiration purposes and for body doubling purposes. So what I do is I compile all of those different journaling sessions into one video, put it over a voiceover or put a voiceover over it with some musical breaks in between. And uh, yeah, that works as a body doubling and inspiration video for anyone who would like to see it. So I think that in the November one that I still have to put out, this session is in there. So keep an eye out for that. I do love these stickers. I love them so much. Um, so week 45 again, no images. Um, I love the yellow in this one and this was a pretty blank spread and I think this whole week I've been in just a mood and just so tired. So I'm tired and all over the place. Right? Woke up with a migraine. So I think I had put up a video that I've since archived that talked about how blank spreads can tell a story as well. I was not feeling well this week and even without having to read these little segments, I can tell that that was the case, right? So you know, blank spaces tell stories as well. Um, and then here you can see, yeah, I have some quotes here. Um, I have a quote from, from Marley, which is now they are no longer going by Marley Grace. They're going by Cody Cook Parrot. Um, begin before you're ready. Don't wait to feel like an expert. I was doing a, so my overhead camera ran out of battery. <laughs> so we're just going to be going from this angle. Um, and I'll kind of, you know, lift this up a little bit, but you can just get the gist of what this looks like um so I just put in some quotes in here I was listening to one of my favorite songs it's actually been my song of the year for two years in a row now complex by Katie Gregson McLeod I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that last name but um complex yeah I love that song uh, triangular I can see them now three points at which I let myself down I was just a girl, what's the excuse now? Oof. And then when I was 19, you know what? Just look up the song. <laughs> um, and then this is one of my favorite spreads. Uh, Let it snow. It's a big sticker that I had that I've never used before. Again, a quote that I included. And in here, um, intimacy is being shown. There is no wariness in the witnessing of you. I choose you to be burdened by. I choose you to be bur okay. I choose you to burden me because I love you. I don't remember what that was from. I think it might have been from a TikTok. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just a spread. I there was a wedding that happened this week. I kind of blocked out their names for privacy reasons. But very cold, very snowy week. Here is another one where I didn't print out the images, but I did have a very big quote which I do have to transfer into my commonplace. Um, this is a quote by Pedrick Otuma from one of their newsletters. And I will read it because um, of this angle, you probably can't see it very well, but I'll go ahead and read that to you. Surprise seems like a word of pleasure, a word of delight, something to expect when the circumstances already lend themselves to it. That is, yes, 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 a lovely thing. But I want surprises elsewhere too. In the admission and cessation of violence, in the possibilities of dialogue, compromise, and concession, a world without surprises is a world of devastation. We know how capable we are of escalation. I wonder and wonder and wonder what can be said about language in these weeks, where language is being used as a weapon, where one person's express statement of solidarity is taken by another as an implicit statement, statement of hostility. It is a surprise that is needed, the kind that might save us, recalibrate us. May such surprises rise. May we not suffocate those brave enough to amplify the nascent language of such, of such surprises. So uh, a really, really good quote regarding the genocide that's currently happening um, 
of the Palestinian people. Um, this is the November, uh, I think the last week of November. Yeah. And as you can see, it is a little empty, but there is a lot of stickers. These beautiful like duck stickers that I got from Sticky Club. And then this is just a sticker that I ended up printing out that I made on Canva. I was going to use this for December daily, but I didn't end up doing December daily. So I just stuck it in here. Didn't finish this spread either. And I'm okay with that. It was the end of the year. You know, this is from an Amiyami package. Uh, I got a figure in the mail and I liked the art on the postcard that they included. So I went ahead and stuck that in here. Nothing written in, just some stickers. <laughs> Um, just some stickers that I got from some packages. Excuse me if you hear my cat in the background. Uh, she's a little rowdy. She's got a bit of the zoomies. And I did write some stuff on this week. And I'm really sad that I didn't finish it actually for this one because I really liked how kind of crowded it looked. I'm one of those people. And actually, let me see. Hold on. So I'm kind of holding you up. Excuse that it is a little rocky. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you this from a better angle because I really like this spread. Uh, I really like how the stickers look together. I love how crowded this looks. I love a crowded page. I love when it's just absolutely bursting at the seams. So I can appreciate emptiness and uh, a blank space for telling a story. But I absolutely love how a flooded uh, kind of crazy spread looks aesthetically. So love that. And yeah, that's it. I just used the other pages uh, to put in some sticker skeletons. But that's pretty much all that it, I did in this one. So I am attempting to be a little creative here <laughs> in my showing you this because, um, yeah, hopefully the phone doesn't fall where I'm at. I usually record on a camera, but again, it ran out of battery and I didn't want to just leave this. I wanted to finish recording this at the same time. It's supposed to rain later and I'm supposed to lose light. I don't want to do that. So hopefully this is okay. Um, my super easy, uncomplicated video has become complicated, <laughs> such is the name of the game, guys. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you a quick flip of kind of like how I've been doing my memory keeping in this insert. Uh, this is a, um, a blank insert that I am using with the Midori cream paper for this year. And I am combining my memory keeping and my media journal into one insert. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to end up doing four in the year, but I'm not giving myself a limit um, however many it takes is however many it takes. There's going to be seasons where I write more and seasons where I write less. It's one of the reasons why I decided to move from a paper test B6, which is where I was doing this originally into a traveler's notebook. I didn't want to have a constraint. I wanted to be very free in how I did this. And so that's why I've moved into a blank insert. I could have easily also moved into a grid insert, but I wanted to experiment with the blank, um, because I've kind of been digging a more freer type of layout and I just use a pencil board if I really want to write a straight line for the most part it's not something that I care too much about but it is there in case I wish to use it so I'm not going to give you a full flip through of this because I still haven't finished backlogging and a full flip through of the quarter will be um, recorded and posted sometime at the end of this month um, or the beginning of next month but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how I was doing it. Since I'm still in the process of backlogging, I don't have a place to put down things at the moment. I could write them down in the field notes, but I actually really hate the... I, I don't like copying word for word. That's why it's taken me so long to do the backlogging in this journal, because copying word for word really stresses me out for some reason. So I just have a post-it here, and I've been putting down quotes that I want to make sure to write in here uh, for whenever I end up getting to March, which hopefully will be by the end of this week, I will start the backlogging process portion of it, where it's me writing new stuff, even though it's happened in the past. And I don't know if that makes sense. So essentially right now I am transferring right now. I'm in a backlogging process where I'm transferring things from my paper test into here. Once I reach the second week of February, I have not done any memory keeping since I was in my paper test. So that's stuff that I have not written down anywhere. I'm going to have to go through my phone and my messages and my other journals to kind of see what was going on and see if there's anything that I want to jot down print out the images and what and whatnot. So that is a 
kind of like the second phase of me being up to date on this journal. Um, so that's where we're at right now. And I just kind of wanted to show you some images of how this is working out. So essentially what I'm doing is I am starting the week with a media log, which is similar to how I did it in my Hobonichi weeks. Um, yeah, so that's similar to that. And then I will just, um, I'll do a margin and I'll have, uh, again, the media that I'm consuming on the margin, as well as kind of like highlights from the day. And I'll show you kind of like a, right, so then I have perfectionism is the voice of the oppressor, which is a quote from a Substack article that I read that day. And just jotting down things that happened, putting down stickers, dot stickers based on the media that I consumed that day, pasting in images. Um, and then once I finish with the week, I just start again with a media log and continue that way with the margins. And again, I will do a more in-depth flip through of what this looks like later on. But I kind of just wanted to show you that there is so many ways, so many different forms of memory keeping um, that you can do in a traveler's notebook. These are just the three ways that I have experimented with doing it. And I hope that that was um, informative or at the very least inspirational to you. Um, hopefully it sparked some ideas of how you can do memory keeping and media logging uh, in your in your traveler's notebook inserts. And this can apply also to any form of notebooks, right? Like let's not let's not just say that this can only be done in a in a traveler's notebook because hold on. That is how the same format is how I did my memory keeping in my paper test V6, right? So I am essentially transferring this information into the traveler's notebook, proof that one format can work in multiple types of journals, right? Obviously, since this format, this is a B6 and this is a standard size, there is a difference in the way that it's kind of organized and laid out, but it is the same type of journaling. So let's say that you don't want to use a traveler's notebook system. Let's say you want to use a rings. Let's say you want to use a Hobonichi. All that I have said still applies. You can still use that type, that same type of memory keeping within those inserts. But for me, I'm currently doing it in a traveler's notebook insert. And so again, I hope that that was inspirational or informative. I hope that you enjoyed this one. It is a shorter video or <laughs> I had tried to make it a shorter video, but it looks like we're in the twenties. Um, <laughs> I apologize again for my sick and uh, stuffy voice, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.